Hello friends, welcome to Seco Psycho. In this video, you're going to learn family counseling. What are the various types of family counseling? What is the difference between the prematal counseling and postmatal counseling? So why we need counseling? So basically, there's a role expectations between husband and wife. If there is a unfulfillment between both, the real conflict starts. To resolve that only, we are doing the family counseling. And also we have assigned a certain stereotyped roles in our society. The inability to play stereotyped roles may give a certain sort of tension, pressure and stress towards the uh, husband and the wife. To resolve and to use uh, the skills such as communications and listening skills to resolve these issues, we use family counseling. What is family counseling? So family counseling or marriage counseling is a form of a short term psychotherapy dealing with interpersonal relationship in which problems relating to marriage are the central factors. So if you take the process, it starts from the referral and ends from the conclusion. So a couple gets a reference from a to get into counseling session and they introduce themselves and the session begins with the rapper building and there will be a situation and in that situation the Counselors want to assess the personality of the couples. After analyzing the personality of the couples, they get to know that what is the interpersonal difficulties they have, and they do understand that what is uh, what what they may issue in the family in the life. So the self understanding plays a key role, and they conclude the sessions. So these are the various steps process we follow in the family counseling. And prematal counseling, generally people think that if there is any issue, so we need to go for a, a psychologist or a counselor. But basically, prematal counseling has become a new trend in this modern society. Why? Because uh, let's check it out in this slideshow. The main function of it are basically prematal counseling is to assist the couples in developing skills to navigate their way through marriage successfully and to identify and resolve the differences in couples before the marriage only. So why we need for pre-martial counseling here, it is detailed explained. So when you, when you are young or never been married, so you do have certain doubts, you have certain uh, burnouts in your head, oh, what are the things I'm, I'm going to do after the marriage? Am I ready for the marriage, all these things? So it is going to be discussed in a pre counseling. And when one partner has committed phobic, so there are certain people who are very phobic, uh, where, where they lack the commitment. For them, premarital counseling is a best way of approach. And when couples can't resolve significant issues like financially, sex and work, and uh, when one or both partners have a previous failed marriages and uh, want to avoid repeating the same mistakes and difficulty in handling the conflict because uh, every person has a different temperament, an history of childhood abuse or domestic violence, sexual abuse before marriage. For these reasons, we need a premarital counseling. So what is the object of prematal counseling? Generally to help them to express their feelings and attitudes, to help couple to relieve fear, worries, anxiety about marriage, to provide education about problems and the responsibilities of marriage, to encourage their individual needs, goals, and values separately in preparing towards solution to their problem. So basically the, uh, the problem here is not a real problem, it's a subject to problem. So it is a problematic situation. So to differ from couple to couple, no, no one's problem is a real problem, it's a problematic situation. So here we need to be genuine, trustworthy, and we need to show accurate empathy towards a couple's problematic situation. So family counseling meets. So human family is understood as a lifelong commitment between a man and a woman to nurture and care for the young ones until they reach maturity. To sanctify this human family system, we introduced a marriage. In every religion, the, this human family marriage is termed as a, a scaled one. And we and uh, many religions tell that we do have uh, sanctity in doing marriages. And, uh, uh, and for that only, we need to have some maturity. So it's not a physical, no physical maturity, but also it's a mental maturity. And uh, to attain both, we need to have a certain sort of education and age factor. So why it became important? Because 
there is an advancement of uh, uh, industries and technology and innovation. These advancements in the quantum world has certainly added in new challenges, thus altering the traditional pattern of family structure, interaction, and environment. Modern marriage system has created uh, a new sort of challenges and a complex system where both husband and wife is going to work and both are running and both are treated as equally. So when there is a three, when there is equality among uh, between two, then the real problem crops up. So to resolve it only, family counseling has got a new uh, agenda in the present scenario of the psychology system. So what is the functions of healthy families? These are the features of healthy families. First one is the knowledge. Knowledge is nothing but you are not having knowledge of uh, GIC or something, but it is a knowledge about mutual understanding based on reciprocal and self disclosure And uh, second is the trust. Trust is like assurance of beneficence. Trust is not talking back of someone. Trust is not uh, supporting uh, someone in front of you. Trust is like, a, are you respecting yours, yourself in the same way you're respecting the others? Uh, that is your close uh, friend or something. But here, trust is more unique phenomenon between husband and wife. Even the marriage uh, agreement or marriage contract, uh, it totally depends on the trust factor. And uh, when you love someone, you care it. So feelings of genuine concerns and affections will depend on caring. If you are not caring, then uh, the person thinks that you are not loving. So caring plays a key role and interdependency. Most of the people think that uh, to become independent, you need to marry. No, after marriage, you are becoming in in that, uh, interdependent with someone. So you are expanding your relationship, or you are uh, extending your family system, and everyone is like interdependent. Everyone is supporting each other and intervening of lives and mutual influence. And mutuality is a sense of Venus. So from before the marriage, you'll feel like I, I, I like equal state. And suddenly you change your name and you change your uh, all your uh, taste and uh, your timings after the marriage. So the I will become V. So Venus will not only increase the oneness of uh, couples, but also it gives a, a sense of caring, uh, trust, and interdependence. And but not but not but uh, least but commitment. Intention to stay loyal in all circumstances is a commitment. So basically, people who don't have commitment, they do get into divorce or uh, some sort of a, a discord in a marriage life. So family is a social system. Ecological the theory by uh, Bowens, which is a, one of the popular theory, which explains about family system theory, gives you levels of functions of a family dependent on its degree and nature of interaction. If you see the diagram here, we start with individual. We born alone, we die alone. No one comes to you, no one leaves you. So you start with individual with the empty mind, like tabul rasa, how the John you said that. So from individual, you start uh, meeting and interacting with your parents, that is your home. And then your gram grandmother, grandfather, that is your family. And uh, if if there is a chance of if you if you if you have siblings or any a school system like pre-primary school so younger body, you'll interact with that also. So when you're interacting with them, you will of course interact with the neighbors, the neighbors' families and their children. So how, that's how your system will be built. It is, it is very small system, it's called micro system. So micro is nothing small system. And when you're when you're growing up, it is going to expand from your own to school, school to neighbor, neighbor to work, which is miso system. It is expanding more than your family expanding more than your own you started uh, stepping out of your own that means you are going to your neighbors and you're playing with their children so that's how that miso system is well miso system is a middle it's a middle system of macro system and micro system and often miso system is an exosystem an exosystem where you meet the parents workplace or when you become a little bit older older you you start going to your, uh, colleagues places the parents uh, colleagues friends, the parents, parents friends places and you start going to schools and you start attending the religions charities like uh, some services come to services and you start watching tvs and you start using the internet so mass media parents workshop child schools come to services all comes an exosystem so it's a 
uh, outside of your home, it's outside of your uh, family. This is extra system. And macro system is a large system which includes culture values, beliefs, customs, and laws. Uh, this is the end part of the system. So you grow from individual to the macro system at last by maturing uh, yourself physically and mentally. So changing the social trends. So basically, uh, woman is treated as a bread maker or homemaker, but at present she is treated as a bread winner also. So she is equally employed with the men. And uh, the main aim of family counseling is if they, if a woman is divorced or if a woman is getting some domestic violence from the family, like mother-in-law side. So the basic aim of the counselor is to empower her. It may be with the job, it may be with the support, social support, it may be legal entities or anything. So the basic concept of the counselling here is to empowering the woman. And a disorganized family situation, if there is a disorganized family situation, uh, maybe martial discord or diverse states, uh, which are having a minimal parenting. These days, these cases have gone uh, leaps and bounds. So to control them, only family counseling has played a key role. So these these people are, I think they work at the courts and police stations and social work and uh, and community community services too. And uh, the decrease in family size is one of the social trends which has happened. We are moving from the joint family system to the nuclear family systems. And we are getting towards individualization rather than social, like uh, the Eastern society, we are following the Western society, which is total individualization. And day to day stress, as women become bread uh, maker to bread winner, so she needs to cope with the stress not only at home but also at work. So, to, due to the stress, it may be that frustration may be turned into supplemented or additionalized in the form of defense mechanism against the mother-in-law, children, or parents, or husband. So to deal with this thing, family counseling has played a key role in that. Arising complex heterogeneous relationship. So once the homosexuality is treated as a sin, or uh, it's a uh, psychological impairment or psychological some problem, but now homosexuality is treated as a comma. It's a, one of the variation in the uh, sexuality. So from these things, we need to be sensitive when you're dealing with these type of things. After the marriage, uh, the man is homosexual or uh, a woman is a lesbian or something. So all these things became so complex in the modern society. An expression of lifespan, as a uh, expression of lifespan has occurred. So at least it was said that many, uh, minimum 50 to 60 years of your life is met with a shared with a girl or a boy in the form of marriage. So you need to be ready, you need to be committed with these things when you're getting into a relationship. So basically there's a difference between individual uh, therapy and family therapy. In uh, individual therapy, we ask why, and in family therapy, we ask what, what is what's your problem, but, uh, what, what questions, which are objective questions. And uh, yeah, individual therapy, it is linear to cause and effect. But in a family therapy, it's total reciprocal casualty. So it's not one side, it's two side. If there is a one side anger, there is a second side reflection of that anger. And in a individual therapy, we are using subjective and objective dualism. But in family therapy, we are using holistic approach where you are including all the factors. It may be subjective, objective, or anything, including emotions stuff also. And in individual therapy, you are using either of one or a dictonomous. But yeah, you are in family is using dialectical. So basically, it's a client-centered therapy. You are uh, you are using a dialogue between uh, couples and uh, to resolve their issues. And uh, in individual therapy, it's a value-free science, whereas family therapy is subjective and perceptional. And uh, individual therapy is a deterministic and reactive. And uh, here, they, in individual therapy, you, do, you must follow the norms which are said in the psychology. But whereas in family therapy, it's a freedom of choice and proactive because every religion has their own system of family and marriages. So you need to be free to choose and be proactive in the family therapy. And uh, laws and law, like external reality will affect, but in family therapy, these are patterns. And in individual therapy, there's a historical focus. 
uh, the past experiments are taken we take certain, certain genograms and uh, case, cases and uh, uh, antece antecedents of a client but here family therapy here is it's a here and now focus so you want to improve the relation interpersonal relationship between a husband and a wife and individual therapy is a totally individualistic and whereas family therapy is a relational and uh, individual therapy is a re uh, reductionistic whereas uh, family therapy is a contextual and individual therapy is absolutic and uh, family therapy is really uh, relativistic because uh, the conflict is not occur from yourself it may be occur from outside also it may be some other real problem it may be financial problem it may be any social problem it's a uh, interrelate that therapy with other factors too so what are the characteristics of families central to family therapist so this is, these are the characteristics of a good families non summativity means family as a whole is greater than differ from some of individual members non summativity is like you are focusing on the whole rather than the individual so due to respecting the elders choice you are moving with them and respecting their choice rather than arguing with them and circular casualty is like changes in one member causes changes in another if if a husband is not caring then wife also of course he, she is not at all caring about the party and if if uh, if uh, wife is showing tantrums then uh, husband to uh, admonish the wife attitudes and behavior so this is a reflection of the behavior from one side to another and then la last thing is the communication traits verbal or non verbal over to subtle means of expressing emotion conflict and emotion the way you express plays a key role the way you talk the way you show your non verbal expression the body language how you groan or you stare or you nod your head plays a key role in interpersonal relationship and homo status is like self regulating to maintain the balance emotionally uh, and uh, to make balance that means when you are arguing with your wife for a certain reason are you telling are you saying sorry to the thing are you making yourself balanced uh, are you adding steady fight uh, today also so these things you need to be consider when you are having a communication traits with a client psychodynamic family therapy these are the various therapies which are given from psychodynamic and uh, dualistic and mystic and existence and various people like a uh, fram one of the person used to psychodynamic family therapy here we are ventilating the of pens of pent up uh, thoughts and feelings and attributions one's feeling under the therapies it's like a transference that means what are the feelings the couple has a wife has a husband has she is attributing on the therapist and the insight of family members into their problem understand the past experience and behavior patterns so insight is like sudden flash of idea of from the family members into into their problem so what is the main reason for their fight maybe a small reason which has made them to suffer for from time to time these things are identified through this process of insight the other approach uh, that is behavioral approach it is based on social learning theory personal and mutual rewards as you all know classical condition theory operant condition theory by b f skinner and thorin dyck and uh, even paul or the clearly said that behavior can be modified based on reinforcement reward or punishment so here you are modifying the couples behavior through mutual rewards or personal rewards so the operant condition suggests that families in distress tend to have an increase in aversion exchanges marked by need to affect that is emotion mutual agreement in client and therapist to carry structured task so you using a structured task that is contingent to contract and uh, practicing desired behavior that is behavior rehearse statements you not at all uh, admonishing or chiding your couple your co-partner but rather than you are making them to understand in a uh, balanced or homeostatic way and altering the environment if the environment of playing a key role of uh, getting into conflict like a uh, uh, wrong friends or uh, the relatives who are eliting eliting the fire so you are changing the environment so far you are planning the environment change so basically couples who are in a mother laws or some other laws they often quarrel that uh, they, these that things are getting in a wrong side or wrong path suddenly when they change that uh, area that environment they become so responsible of their own acts and they become more proactive of their own things
and to regulate the power imbalances in the family. So for that only you are training as a tool. So to express the things freely without any hesitations or without any uh, dots or something. In assertive training, it's not that you are hurting the others, but you are expressing it from your heart, from the bottom of your heart. So psychodynamic approach model. So catharsis is a ventilation of pent up thoughts and feelings. So it's a releasing of your all your negative thoughts and aggression towards your family, towards of your relative, towards your wife or husband. And transference, where your attribution of unconscious feelings on therapist is a one way where uh, a husband has a grudge on wife. So it, he doesn't know how to express it. So in transparent, he's expressing on the on, on the therapist. So that that uh, expression is coming from the unconscious feelings or unconscious mind. And counter transference with therapist attribution of unconscious feelings on plan, so that the client will get to know that what are the things he is getting lagged in the uh, in his life. And holding a secure base by therapist to care and support. So it's a holding to make sure that. Uh, that a client is uh, independent to take his own decisions and he, is, he has certain social uh, support system. Uh, it is not like that if wife is ignoring or wife is uh, shouting at him, uh, the whole world is shouting at him. He, couldn't, he shouldn't think like that. There are certain things he can take support from it. It may be families, relatives or counselors. So holding is a one of the way of care and supporting the uh, client. So cognitive approach, it's like a first one, disputation. In disputation, we are challenging the client's own thoughts. So basically, cognitive approach is dealing with the thoughts. How our thoughts will affect our feelings and actions. So when you change, when you uh, replace that negative thought with the positive thoughts, automatically, the family, the family system becomes so positive and so joyful, so peaceful. So disputation is like challenging the one's thoughts. When you, this, when you challenge the client's thoughts, you automatically change the belief system of a client. The next one is a self-monitoring exercise. Self-monitoring exercise is to stop the automatic thoughts. These automatic thoughts is like, like a negative thoughts which are coming from your uh, unconscious mind or subconscious mind, which are learned behavior. Basically, many people, they develop the automatic thoughts without any uh, education or without any logic, without any critical thinking. So to counteract that uh, automatic thoughts, Clients are engaged for self-monitoring, self-monitoring their own thoughts through certain exercises. And communication skills, working on exchanging information. So communication skills are one of the soft skills we must know how to communicate, how to share our ideas without any noise or without any prejudice when you're speaking with them. The way you, sp the way you speak uh, plays a key role when you're, uh, when you're uh, having a, a idea, an idea to express it. So communication skills, most of the time the couples, they quarrel because of lack of communication skills or communication skills lagging or there's a miscommunication or misunderstanding. And the last but not least, positive self statement. That means uh, my husband is uh, trustworthy, my, my wife is uh, very helpful. So by repeating the positive self statement, you can change the negative self attribution which is there in your mind. Structural family counseling. So in structural family counseling, you're reframe, reframing the, uh, the, the attitudes and the attributions of a client. So you're, so here you're presenting a problem in a different light. So you're reframing it. Rather than using the negative sentence, you're using a positive sentence. So in a reframing way. For example, I want to, I want to get to my wife. It's like, a, it's, I want, it's only desire. But I will get to, to my wife, it's I will. I will, it's like, uh, it is doing, it's like totally action oriented. So these are the sentences you can reframe by looking in a different light. And restructuring is like changing, family structure, altering, existing hierarchies, and boundary making, separating subsystem to maximum group function, and enactment, demonstrating problem in the session. So boundary making means you, we do have certain boundaries between a husband and wife. When there's a break, when there's a breakdown of these boundaries, uh, the real fight or real drama starts. So here you are separating the subsystem. That means like a when you are like a fixing certain boundaries between your wife and husband. There is no trust. There is no care. There is no honesty or uh, commitment to that relationship. So here, counselor is trying to break that boundary and restructure the family system and enact a 
uh, demonstrating problem in the session. So here, enactment means that you are demonstrating the problem in the session, so that the client could understand what is the main issue in that. So Bond system theory by Murray, Bond, Monica, and M. Goldry. These people they uh, propose various things in family counseling. So as I explained, the Bowman system is an ecological system which explains about a individual system, micro system, meso system, exo system, macro system. The same way you will find a genogram. Geno means like family. Gram means like a. It's a graph which is shown. It's a family tree basically to weave the historic and contemporary patterns symbolically. So genogram plays a key role in uh, such on teaching the. Uh, couples mentality and the temperament issues because as we know that biologists learn these uh, issues with their parents with their grandparents then the same issues are repeated with the present couples also so genograms gives a complete picture of family tree and retrangulations to be contact yet emotion separate so not at all being attached to the emotions but we are attaching to the only uh, the positive emotion or the negative emotion and asking content based questions Objectively review family issues without emotion overlap. Basically, most of the fights are getting from me over indulge emotions. So to be stable plays a key role uh, in counseling session. So here you are asking content based questions, not subject only. You are using the object to review the family issues and differentiation of self. Differentiating between subjective feelings and objective feelings. So by the differentiating the subjective feelings and objective feeling, then client could focus only on objective thinking rather than subjective feelings because subjective feelings will vary from person to person. Uh, what is right e may be wrong to you. What is wrong may be right to you. So to eradicate to take away the subjective feeling, you are adding the object to thinking. It is logical thinking. So these are strategic counseling. That means you need to relabel or uh, giving a new perspective to behavior. So labeling to stop the automatic thinking process and paradoxing, insisting on clients' opposite viewpoint. If a client is thinking in a negative way, you may make them to uh, contract a negative thinking with a positive one and prescribing the symptoms. That means family displays a voluntary what they are previously displaying voluntary. So basically, Fried said that whatever behavior sometimes you behave from unconscious feelings. So this unconscious, which is involuntary behavior, may affect that person very negatively. Uh, a husband loves his wife a lot, but suddenly uh, he becomes so angry and he shouts at her. And after some time, he thinks that he didn't do, say anything. So it is coming from involuntary way, displayed in involuntary way. So here, yeah, the counselor is trying to display in a voluntary way. So what we say is coming from the head, not from the heart. That means not from emotion way. And pretending and acting conflicts and disturb, uh, disturbing patterns and problem externalization, so separating a uh, person from problem. So here you separate when the when you think the problem is bigger than you, the solution is uh, is very small to you. So here when you're separating the problematic situation from you, you start thinking about it, you start uh, thinking think in a clear way and realistic way, and you can. Uh, resolve that issues as soon as possible and building awareness so when you build awareness you don't think in a subjective way but you, you do in an objective way. you do in a logical way so which is different by reminding different from the past experiences so last but not least it's a cbt and rbt cbt is a cognitive behavior therapy and rbt is a reaction behavior therapy which was given by the ellis uh, which is a very popular therapy where you're thinking a rational way, rational behavior therapy. So, erroneous attitudes and rigid beliefs among once or more family members are seen as a disturbance and interpersonal conflict. During therapy, an attempt is made to identify, examine, challenge, dispute, modify, and replace faulty reasoning of each member and teaching about the co coexistence of divergent thoughts to separate emotions from the person who wrote thinking. So for that only we're using RBT like as rational behavior therapy. So disputation, as I said, it involves identifying of the mental distortions or irrational thoughts, which are then challenged systematically. The client's language is important, like aware of self statements, like eliminate any shoulds or must or personal uh, statements, which relieves ability on systematic uh, homeworks, assessments and periodic as assessment of one stuff. So basically, you're changing the uh, the language of a 
client uh, making to eliminate the shoots and most which are very perfectionist so no one is perfect if you sign for so much of perfectionism the real issues or real drama starts in the family and exponential family therapy here you are focusing on the here and now then the past expression of feelings value then discovery of insight we take care of one of the psychology he said a person of the therapist say person not be a uh, work on building open awareness rather than uh, going on to problematic situation and the virgin is at that set a growth model a comprehensive set of beliefs methods tools experiences exercise or uh, support post to change in our individual family systems organ and your communities and it includes alternatives of problem solving approach develop right hemisphere intervention such as you know meditation trance touch voice tone of it so these are very important uh, everyone loves uh, comedy or sarcasm so here we are encouraging client to be uh, to to explore the comedy part in and to be meditate when they uh, to be meditate is not like sitting and uh, closing eyes means being silent when someone is shouting at you and being trans means you just leaving the things and you're focusing on the uh, constructive things rather than destructive things and touch touch plays a key role when just you just pat back of your husband or even touching the wife's like hand or something cheeks or something it gives us positive feeling positive vibration towards it and it will strengthen the relationship between uh, wife and husband and what's done also even though you just want to show anger also why don't you lower your voice and just give a feedback rather than criticizing the acts of the uh, husband or wife and affect affect is a your emotion so making the make, using your emotion only for building your relationship rather than destroying that communication interactional theory by griger batch so communication is one of the soft skill here communication is exchanging the information so we take care emphasis on symbolic uh, modality or uh, dysfunctional due to being rapid and self protective to extend of avoiding confrontation their problems and rea- reacting spontaneously uh, here you are not to utter symptoms directly to faster create to understanding of problem by engaging normally rather than focusing on the problem situation you focus on creative ideas and uh, so basically people are very self protective or introvert or rigid they don't have enough good communication skills so your core technique like redefining the problem separation separating inter and intra person conflict affective confrontation stress on realizing maximum growth and transformation overcoming inhibitions or leading to positive or self actualization core techniques to identify beliefs emotions coping mechanism following by choosing to alter and redefine and also using a spiritual liber- liberation to make a uh, couple to live happily so now the next one is a family dynamics it is a structure cycle and flow so family structure is like a genogram i said genogram is something which is family tree and family cycle is like how the family goes through different developmental life stages and a family power way greater control while others are more submitting and kotla and uh, she part asking specific questions so this specific question will make a clear agenda of a client's mentality so questioning plays a key role in uh, making a good conversation uh, it may be questioning may be like uh, what's the problem when does a problem occur where does a problem occur and uh, where are where are various family members when the problem occur what is each member of the family doing when the problem occurs what are the effects on each family member what are the beliefs to clients who uh, in the family has had similar problem where is the power money decision of time who is being protected so this type of uh, question specific questions is going to be asked in the counseling session it is prepared by courtler courtler so what are the goals of family counseling So at the end of the family counseling, if you reach this type of course, that means you are very successful. So giving every family member a voice and an opportunity to be heard without fear or favor, identifying faulty common pattern, work in building interactions, healthy and productive, to resolve interpersonal issues with a greater resilience in the future, 
enhancing their relationship by making each member open and receptive towards the needs of others relate to each other's feeling with a greater empathy so these are the goals of the family counseling so providing empathy uh, getting receptive towards the needs and these aligns and interacting healthy and productive way so these are the ethical values when it comes to ethics uh, plato aristotle cicero they emphasize ethics plays a key role so what are the six core virtues of our ethics are? autonomy which is independence veracity uh, justice fidelity beneficence and no malfeasance uh, malfeasance sorry so these are the six core uh, ethical values and other than that maintaining confidentiality is a primary mode of counseling and informal consent and issues of discrimination handling relational matters in an individual context and avoidance of harm to friends or multiple relationships these are the ethical issues we need to deal and if you come to the challenges uh, the challenges are like a, they are very complex due to more number of clients uh, in family counseling and uh, there is you need special training to give a family counseling uh, relatively little research based information because there are many social culture differences and uh, religious differences if you want to deal with the family counseling you need to be positive you need to be sensitive of these factors and lack of cultural competence can impede the counseling session and clinicians treating family have to weigh many variables and their uh, idiopathic situation so considering very many things make uh, a client to take much time to deal with of things so to overcome this challenge you see only many people they are well trained in family counseling and still it is being successful in psychology so that's all friends this is our family counseling uh, if you have any doubts you can comment in the sections uh, thank you for watching